know their stuff. They know the real law, and they want to just relate a few things to you right now. Please uh, welcome Michael and Daniel. Thank you, Mark. And uh, thank you very much, Daniel, for that um, that talk you just delivered. Uh, beautiful, beautiful words. G'day, Australia. How's the weather today? Hey, the rain, rain held off pretty good. How the world has changed in such a short amount of time. A valiant effort has been mounted to unite our people of this country over these weeks and months. We have witnessed our brothers and sisters rise to the occasion and travel to Canberra from all corners of this beautiful country continuously, week in, week out. Whatever political ideology, faction or allegiance what started as a movement of a few dozen people has grown to be the largest political demonstration in Australian history. Week on week we turn up, week on week we grow stronger together. My brother and I were invited to speak again here today and we cannot emphasise the danger and distress our country is facing in this dark hour. This is by no means a political statement but an imminent unfolding of catastrophe. The loyal and trusting men and women of this country have been bombarded over the past two years with a propaganda fear campaign built on lies, corporate greed, misalignment of national interests and who have been manipulated into a state of psychological trauma. Trauma that will linger for generations. The time for debate, conjecture and politics is over. We can clearly see our elected leaders and government officials refuse to have the best interests of everyday Australians and the Australian nation's best interests at heart. My brother and I are standing here before you today, stripped of our youth, impacted by the perils of this encroaching new world order, left with no option but to grasp onto the only thing that holds truth on this land, the spirit of our Anzac. Our forefathers, the ones who galvanized our sovereignty and independence on this land of this Commonwealth under God Almighty. Our Anzac died for you to have the opportunity to fly a million different flags. Please reflect on this. Whether bushfires, flood or health crisis, our leaders have sold the people of Australia out at the taxpayer's expense, accumulated literally trillions of dollars in debt to line the pockets of corporate entities signing away our sovereign rights to international conventions and treaties and forcibly poisoned the bloodlines and genetic library of us all, the great people of Australia. We have been deliberately misled and divided, misled from the truth of who we are and what our inheritance means to us all, indigenous, white, every Australian in this country. This government has worked explicitly towards the destruction of our middle class, the subjugation of our indigenous sovereign peoples, lack of informed consent in medical procedures, illegal mandating of untested experimental chemicals, especially on our children, unnecessary perpetrated fear and segregation of our peaceful peoples and the pillaging of our natural resources. The damage orchestrated by our elected leaders in this society and the destruction of our way of life has been incredibly significant. Both federally or state, we must acknowledge the atrocities that have been and are continuing to be waged upon the Australian people. Atrocities that have led to the humiliation of all Australians, whether they are aware of it or not. A fortnight ago, my brother and I stated, there was a time and a place for peace and a time and a place for war. 
Not even a week ago, our leaders and government, without your consent, have conscripted us, the Australian nation, into an international conflict which we have no business or affiliation. While our country is literally and financially underwater. Priming us, the people, to be used as cannon fodder for their corrupt war machine, the Australian people did not vote, consent or agree to this madness. Our government justifies the expenditure of hundreds of millions of dollars for foreign aid and tools to be used, waged in war. Yet at home, Australians are drowning in their homes, starving in their towns, bankrupted by a corrupt state and forcibly coerced into being experimental test subjects to be administered harmful and toxic chemicals, chemicals that are literally killing and maiming people without so much of a second thought or scent of compensation. We must stand up in our own right, in our own communities, in our own towns and seek to acknowledge, remedy and rebuild the faith and trust within our people, within our great country. Through changing the local, we endeavour to change the national. In this, the Australia, excuse me, is this the Australia of old, of opportunity and prosperity? Is this the Australia we want to pass down for our children and grandchildren to inherit? A society sick with woke politics and modern culture, being led by the nose by a corrupt media, morally jumping on every bandwagon that is relentlessly shilled regardless of facts or conflicting opinions and healthy debate against any narrative. Over the past two years, our nation has been deliberately set up and deceived. It is becoming alarmingly apparent that the affliction of this poison onto our people, indiscriminate of race, colour or creed, will have devastating and lasting consequences for generations to come. Why have our leaders led this country into ruin and decay at the cost of a trusting Australian population? We must question this and understand why. It is apparent from official sources that no one has or will escape from the atrocities which have befallen Australia and even abroad. Regardless of the fallout and devastation that will ensure in the weeks, months and years to come, we must seek internally within ourselves to set our differences aside, to stand together and protect one another, to safeguard our communities, our way of life, our food supply and our natural abundant resources. We must unite this country under one common goal against one common enemy. In the fog of war, disinformation and distraction is rampant. We are constantly being fed lies from our leaders and the media. The only truth we can rely upon is that of our Anzacs. Their struggle, their hardship, their sacrifice and their spirit. We must at all costs embody and protect this spirit and stand in the light of our birthright and inheritance, not just here in Australia, but over the ditch in New Zealand and every supposed democratic country involved in our great Commonwealth. We see what has happened in Canada these last few weeks. We see what is happening to our Anzac brothers and sisters in New Zealand. We refuse tyranny here in this sovereign nation and we will not be intimidated by their unlawful and unconstitutional directions eventually justice will prevail. It is up to every single Australian man and woman to stand and take accountability back into their communities and towns. This is a warning to the people of Australia that the orchestrated collapse of our free democratic society is imminent. Look at our fuel prices. Look at our disrupted supply chains. 
Look at the legislative acts which aim to disrupt and cripple our food supply into the future. Look at the situation that has befallen this beautiful nation. We are just two young men from Melbourne that have had almost everything taken away from us and we refuse to see this country fall. May we all stay safe in the coming weeks and months ahead. Let us stand in remembrance and honour this day, lest we forget. I do believe